Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and this is Bliss Studio Hobbies. So for this video, we are going to do a diamond painting whip and chat. So grab your projects and work along with me and I will keep you company for about an hour. So I am working on Adobe Moon from Diamond Art Club. I will put a picture of this beautiful canvas on the screen here. It is one of the um, canvases that I purchased off of Amazon. It is a 13 by 16 inch diamond painting by Tava Studios. That abstract painting, I think it's so beautiful and I can't wait to get it finished. Um, I am not working with any uh, special tools or anything. I'm working with the tray that comes with the kit, a little cover minder, flower cover minder that comes with the kit. And I have kitted up in the baggies provided from Diamond Art Club. So this canvas was one of my room canvases. So I diamond paint downstairs in my office and I also diamond paint sometimes upstairs in my room like late at night when I'm ready to go to bed but I'm not like sleepy. So I may do a couple of um a couple of uh areas on my painting until I get sleepy enough to fall asleep. So that's why I have a room canvas. And those canvases are typically color blocking or smaller canvases that I can complete quickly. So this has been my room canvas for a couple of weeks now. So I thought it'd be fun to get some work done on it and do this video. I'm taking a break from my bigger canvas now. So nothing's been going on really, just work and you know, <laughs> regular things um with charlie my golden retriever um year and a half year old um puppy he's been very naughty today like really naughty um jumping up to the table taking mail and then running around trying to tear it up he's ripped up one of his um his new toys um, today's Tuesday over the weekend I did um, purchase about five new toys for him he loves them all I try to get toys that I know that he will like and one of them he ripped up today that's not to me that's not him being naughty I mean that's normal for him to chew on things that's why I try to get him toys that um, he can't whip, rip open quickly <laughs> I've purchased toys that he's destroyed in like five minutes, but I'm getting better at purchasing toys that are right for him and that he can keep for a little bit before they're ripped apart. I bought him like this little Halloween spider and that met his, its match today. Um, but the jumping up and getting the mail off of the table, I'm like, what are you doing? So he was doing it so much. We even moved the mail and he's like just finding other things to do. He needs to get some of that energy off, you know? So he's been naughty in that way today. Um, but yeah, it's just him having all of this energy and not knowing what to do with it. So that's when we have to get up and play with him or do things with him so that his focus is somewhere other than what he's not supposed to be doing. Um, sometimes when he gets too rambunctious like that and I cannot redirect him and he just constantly doing things like that, I have to put him in timeout. Now, I do have two, some people don't agree with it, but it, it works for him. Um, either I have him sit on the steps for a couple of minutes. That's normally like one minute actually um, until he can settle himself down and then he comes back down and he realizes that he had to do that and then he's good. So I'm like, go upstairs and he sits on the stairs and he looks sad, but I'm like, you have you have to get yourself together. And I know he's still a puppy, but normally when I have him sit on the stairs for a couple of minutes just to calm down, he um that's what we call his timeout. And he calms down, come back, and then magically he starts behaving and he'll either play with us or play with his toys. Because the problem is we can try to redirect him, but as we're like playing and throwing his balls or toys or whatever, in the middle of that, he'll stop and go do something he's not supposed to do. And I'm like, why didn't he bring the toy back? 
and then he's in the living room jumping over so, you know so it's like <laughs> um squirrel that's how he is sometimes so so there's that about charlie that's all that's going on nothing much in the way of that so we are going to do some am i the a-hole i um did save a couple of stories today by the title so let's get into that if i seem like i have low energy i do i am really tired <laughs> i actually had to um i just finished taking a nap so i'm really tired i should have had some tea to perk me up a little bit because i don't want to bore you guys but i i do feel a little bit like i'm low energy but I got to get this video recorded and get it out for tomorrow. So here we go. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister that the name she chose for her son was not our grandpa's actual name, but the nickname he hated? I thought that was interesting. How did she not know her grandfather's name? So here we go. My sister wanted to honor our late grandpa and her son's name and chose to call her son Bobby which is what pretty much everyone called our grandpa. She mentioned the name being so special because it was his beloved great grandpa's name and that it would be so special for our grandpa to have his name live on. So here's the thing. Bobby was my grandpa's nickname and he hated it. His actual name was Cyrus, which was grandpa's mom's maiden name. Grandpa was named that by her and after she died and his dad remarried, they started to call him Bobby because his stepmother's dad was Robert. Okay, I read that kind of fast. So he was named Cyrus after his late, his late mother's grandfather. After his mother passed, um, his dad got with his stepmother and then started calling him Bobby from her dad, Robert. What is going on here? Grandpa always hated Bobby, but after years of people refusing to listen, he gave in. He had a handful of friends who called him Cyrus or Cy, but that was it. I told my sister this and she was upset and asked why he hated Bobby. Bobby is so cute. I asked her how she'd feel to be named after her late parent and for his surviving parent and step-parent to then rename you after the step-parent's side unofficially, but to the point where it sticks more than your actual name. Good point there. She was glad at first, but after a few weeks, she snapped and told me she doesn't like Cyrus and I ruined the name Bobby for her. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for telling her the truth? Her baby was not born and is still not born, so I wanted her to know before he was here. I say not the a-hole. The sister's pregnant and probably, you know, emotional and everything because she was dead set on the name Bobby and then she gets told this story <laughs> and now the name is ruined for her so I get her being like disappointed in that aspect but it's you're not the a-hole and it's not your fault you did a good thing by looking out for your sister and saying hey actually grandpa hated that name so I think you did a good deed by telling your sister that and not the a-hole I don't think your sister's actually mad at you she's you know was dead set on this name she's pregnant so probably um emotions are running are running high with that but not the a-hole there's no overall upvote this was posted 11 hours ago but the most upvoted comment is not the a-hole you told her the truth and she can't handle it <laughs> true 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 and then um the next most upvoted comment is honestly this is her problem Original poster only listed the facts and told her how it is. And the caveat is that the baby isn't even born yet. So it's not like there had to be a name change. Part of me is wondering why this wasn't known to original poster's sister. It doesn't seem like it was a family secret or anything. So I'm wondering if sister did know and just chose to forget about it until it was brought back up. Not the a-hole original poster. That's what I said. I'm like, why didn't she know this about her grandfather's name? But the other sister did i don't know but yeah not the a-hole i placed that <laughs> so wonky not the a-hole oh 
All right, so that's our first story. Let's see what else we can get ourselves into. Am I the a-hole for taking a day off for myself without telling my husband? I'm like, what? <laughs> my husband, 38 male, and I, 40 female, have been married for eight years and have a four-year-old son. I work for a regional park district managing the outdoor recreation education program. Basically, I work outside 90% of the time. The summer is by far my busiest time of year and I routinely work six days a week. If I can make it work, I will take a day off during the week to offset my hours because our weekend events are the ones I'm most needed at since they are bigger. I'm salaried, so don't get overtime. Let's see if I can place a little bit of drills. I hope I'm in frame. I didn't really look at the... Okay, I think I'm in frame. This is not new. I've been in this position since before my husband and I got married. He knows how busy I am this time of year. Since our son was born, my husband has gotten increasingly grumpy during this time of year because he obviously has to be responsible for our son during the weekends when I work. We fought about this a number of times because he feels like I should talk to my bosses about getting other people to take over some of my weekend events so he doesn't get stuck with our son by himself every weekend. I feel like he needs to suck it up because this isn't new to anyone and it's only a small portion of the year that my schedule is like this. His argument is that there is nothing he does that leaves me parenting by myself for similar amounts of time and that there needs to be more of a balance in that area. This past weekend, I had events on both Saturday and Sunday full eight hour days. I'm outside in the heat. By the time I got home both nights, I was exhausted and just wanted to take a shower and go to sleep. I tried to watch a movie with them Saturday night, but fell asleep on the couch. Last night, I crashed by 8 p.m. This morning, I told my husband I was going to go to work from home for a bit in the morning to offset my hours. But after my husband took our son to daycare and I started looking at emails, I changed my mind and just took the day off to get some rest and maybe do a few things around the house. I must have fallen asleep on the couch because I woke up to my husband making himself lunch in the kitchen. He regularly comes home for lunch because his office is nearby. I asked him how his day was going and a few other questions and he kept giving me one word answers. I asked him if he was okay and he told me he was tired and feels like he hasn't gotten a break all summer and is frustrating for him to come home and see me napping when I told him I was going to work from home. I told him I was still tired from the weekend and decided to take the day off. He said he's tired too and that I need to start doing a better job of taking his needs into consideration as well instead of just focusing on my own. He said it's not fair to him to work five days a week then be a solo parent all weekend while all I do is work and sleep. I told him the summer is almost over so my weekends will free up again soon. But all he said was, since you're rested now, you can pick up son from daycare. I won't be home for dinner. So, I think this poster is the a-hole because um, I, she's not taking her husband's feelings into consideration here. She is, this just seems one-sided, like I'm tired, so I'm going to just, I'm going to work and go to sleep and my husband takes care of the son all weekend and I don't have any responsibility because my weekends are busy and, and I'm just thinking like you, I know you work outside and you're tired and everything, but you work an eight hour shift. You can work your eight hour shift. Heck, you can even work your eight hour shift, come home and take an hour nap and then wake up and take care of your son for the rest of the evening so that your husband who's been with your son all day gets a break. Like taking care of a child is also a job and that's not like he had a break all day where you get to just work and um, come home and go to sleep. Tired, I know you both are tired. So there has to be some compromise there. And for her to, if she's able to just like take the day off, well, that day that you take off of work, weekly or whatever then that's the day that you take over the you know the night routine of the of the child so that i can have 
a little bit of time to myself because that can be frustrating, I know. So I think this poster is the a-hole and not being very fair to her husband. And the fact that he came to her and said, hey, this seems one-sided, I need a break, you know. I think this this type of behavior is what leads to problems in marriages. Just by her not listening to him and saying he just needs to suck it up. No, sometimes when you're tired, you have to suck it up and watch your, your son as well, you know. But that's just my two cents. Let's see. This poster was voted a hole. So let's see what the top voted comment is. There are two seems like. It says, you're the a-hole, not for the day off. Everyone should get one from time to time. You're the a-hole because your husband is 100% parent during every weekend of the summer months, in addition to also having a full-time job Monday through Friday. He's asked you to talk to your bosses about getting more people, but you refuse. So I guess this is life for him now. June through August, full-time parent every weekend. Also, all the household chores are on the weekend. Exactly. Cooking, mowing, etc. You've dumped too much on him and your answer is basically suck it up. That's true. And he said he's not coming home for dinner tonight. And uh, huh, you, you, you better get it together or things don't seem like they're going to go very well. Um, the next upvoted comment is original poster works for a regional park department and public sector work. Getting more people is not really a thing. Staffing is dictated by funding, not needs, and some uses are legally mandated. This goes double for programming staff. I don't know why that comment was highlighted. Th th I don't know. Th that's what? <laughs> this doesn't mean the poster is not the a-hole. You know what I mean? That That doesn't matter to me. I don't know why that had so many upvotes as well as the top comment but it was highlighted and it did so basically that they were just saying that getting more staff to help is not always always a thing but i get that but the poster is still an a-hole because instead of trying to find solutions she's telling her husband to suck it up instead of saying okay i understand maybe like i said maybe i'll come home take a hour nap and then you know do bedtime routine or let you have the night to yourself or do something you like or whatever, you know? So, a-hole. Alrighty. Oh, yeah, guys. Let me know what you are working on down below. I'll also link this canvas um, in the description box if you guys... Um, if I can still find it. I haven't really seen it on the um, Amazon store lately. And I just checked the store a couple of days ago. So if I can find it and if it's still on there, I will link it below so you guys can check it out if you so wish. Let's get into the next story. Am I the a-hole for not saving my sister-in-law's cat? Yeah, so my husband's sister is staying with us for a few weeks. She brought her cat with her, and honestly, she's been getting on my nerves. <laughs> I need to, um, uh, I have putty in here. I don't know what kind of putty it is. Um, I don't remember, but I need to change it out because it is like picking up every other drill. I think I'll just use this pin for now. Mm, I don't like the feel of this pen. Alrighty. Like, I love cats, but she lets it into the kitchen despite us telling her that's a hard no. She lets him follow her wherever she goes in the house, and she even yelled at her brother, my husband, because he stepped over the cat when he was just laying on the stairs. Oh my gosh. Okay, so onto the conflict. I took my toddler for a change in my bedroom, another place the cat is not meant to come. 
The bedroom window was open, but behind me, and I was changing my toddler on the bed, Cat jumped out of the window. Oh, gosh. Sister-in-law comes screaming into the room that I should have been watching the cat, and oh my God, what's happened to it? Cat was fine. It landed on the neighbor's wall and then came back down into the garden. But sister-in-law has been really snotty with me and husband because apparently I should have left my baby on the bed mid-change to catch the cat that shouldn't have been in my room and stop it from jumping out the window. Am I the a-hole? Absolutely not the a-hole. Your sister should be keeping an eye on her own cat. Um, and then that wouldn't happen. So not the a-hole. When, when it said the cat jumped out the window, I'm like, oh my gosh. But I forget. The cats always land on their feet, right? Um, there's no overall vote. This story was posted nine hours ago. Let's see what the people had to say. Not the a-hole. This sounds like a house guest that shouldn't be invited to stay again. Oh my gosh, I love that comment. Let's upvote that comment because love it. Love it, love it, love it. I I know I don't like animals in the kitchen either. My dog, I'm always like out of the kitchen, out of the kitchen. Because when he was a puppy, and now he knows he's not supposed to be in the kitchen. He would try to jump on the counters and I, I can't, I just can't, I can't have it. Can't do it. Can't have it. Um, some people won't like that either because some people don't mind and they feel like if you have a dog, that's what they're going to do. But no, nope, nope, nope. I don't want my dog in the kitchen, especially the type of dog I have with his hair just flies everywhere. And I'm not like a big hair freak or anything like that, but he's barking now. If I don't have to eat the dog here and have it in my food i would prefer my food without the hair right um <laughs> oh so that comment was like sounds like a house guest that shouldn't be invited to stay again and the next comment after that the most upvoted as well more like should be asked to leave <laughs> that's funny that one was a short one yeah, how are you a house guest and you're <laughs> and granted this person has been allowing this cat to do whatever they want. So this cat is pro at this point may not even be like redirectable with just a couple of times of telling the cat to like stop or whatever. But she's is a guest and um I wouldn't come to someone's house and do that. I just wouldn't. Even if it's my sibling. But that's that. All right. This one says, am I the a-hole for accusing my wife of workaholism and, and money obsession in front of our friends? My male 33 and wife, female 25, seems to be a workaholic and is obsessed with her work. She recently graduated with her master's, but she's been supporting herself since she was 18 by running an Etsy shop. I got laid off three years ago and have been unable to find a job ever since. So he's been out of work for three years and she's been supporting herself with her Etsy shop. Okay. Apart from working, my wife also writes books as a hobby, which she wants to self-publish once she finishes edits. She wrote two so far. She's also just started a true crime YouTube channel. You think that's enough, right? Wrong. I love his wife, by the way. She sounds very ambitious <laughs> and I love it. She started a YouTube true crime channel. That's what this channel was originally supposed to be. Anyway, that's this is enough about me. <laughs> you think that's enough, right? Wrong. She's also going to go swimming three times a week and has language qu classes. It's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Love his wife. Sounds like she is doing it and he's sitting at home for three years. Um, anyway, I had some friends over a few nights ago and we were playing some games and having a B, maybe a beer, he meant. My wife doesn't like my mates, but they brought their girlfriend's wives so she could have made an effort. Instead, she told me, <laughs> I'm sorry. Instead, she told me she didn't even know they were coming as I didn't tell her um, I included them. And she already had plans. She locked herself up on her office to write her book or script or whatever. Love it. I was pissed. 
I texted her multiple times, but she ignored me. When she went to the kitchen to get water, I confronted her and told her she's a workaholic and money obsessed. My friends heard it. Really? <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish reading this. No, I'm not. So he told his wife that she was a workaholic and work obsessed in front of his friends. When he doesn't work and she's working to take care of this family... Granted, she could have been a little bit nicer to the girlfriends, but you already knew she didn't like them. <laughs> I'm on her side, right? Anyway, let's continue. And my friends heard it. And she had the audacity to say that if it wasn't for my debt, she wouldn't have to work this much. Exactly. I told her she was out of line. She called me an a-hole and some other things. She slept on the couch in her office that night, her decision, and we're on no speaking terms. You, you, he said she had the audacity. Of course she had the audacity. Oh my gosh. I'm just judging this guy. They're on no speaking terms now. My mates agree with me. Well, of course they do. The, your mates and your girlfriend don't like each other. They generally think she's stuck up anyway. She said I was the asshole for airing our dirty laundry publicly and should have addressed it privately. I guess they're right and I'm the asshole for that, but I was angry. I wonder was I the a-hole because if so, I I need to apologize and bring up the issue privately. Sorry for the typos, new phone. Yes, that's why I kept stammering over my words because there is a lot of typos in, in this. I'm like, what the heck? Um, so I'm going to say, um, he's the a-hole. Um, and also he could have told his wife that, um, that the girlfriends and wives were coming. He didn't even tell her that they were coming and she already set aside time to do her work on her book. So I'm, he's the a-hole and he could have told her separately or privately went up there and told her privately, like, can you come down? You know, you're being, you know, it's kind of rude that they're here, blah, 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 or whatever. And they could discuss the other stuff privately. And I don't, I, how can he say she's being a workaholic and he doesn't even work? Like, I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand, but I think he's an a-hole. And then going to say he has, she has the audacity to bring up his debt. Yeah, she's sitting there working hard because you have debt and you don't work and you're getting mad at her. I don't know. It seems like, um, it seems like she has a lot to do and making a lot of ways for herself and he's not doing anything and he's mad about it. Well, that's what it seems like to me. I don't know. I keep get grabbing different pins. <laughs> All right. So, top, um, so he was voted the a-hole. And then the top voted comment, you're the a-hole. How are you going to ridicule your wife for being ambitious and working hard to clear your debt and pay for your costs too when you're jobless and contributing nothing financially? If you really did feel she was working too much you could have spoken to her in private instead of calling her out and embarrassing her in front of others you're the a-hole mate <laughs> and then the next person said she's eight years younger but clearly has her head screwed on better than this mooch how do you not have your shit together at 33 she should dump your ass go be happy with all her hobbies and interests without your bs <sighs> i agree Reddit will have you leaving all your relationships. That's funny. Yeah, I don't even, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Like, how are you going to be mad at her? Because she's a so-called workaholic and you don't work. Maybe she wouldn't have to have so many hobbies and extras if you did. But that is that on that. Next one. Am I the a-hole for leaving my boyfriend at a bar because of a joke he made? Ooh. I, 22 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 23 male, for about nine months now. I am Asian and grew up in my home country pretty well 
all my life until I was 19 and went abroad to Europe country to study. My boyfriend is from this country I'm currently studying in. He has shown interest in my background a bit and I honestly like talking to him about it. I never questioned anything about our relationship until last night when we went to a bar with some of his friends. One of his friends asked if my boyfriend was trying to learn my native language and he told him no. My boyfriend went on to joke about how my language sounded too rough and weird for him to even try. I gave him a confused look and he said that he would have if it were more like Japanese or Korean. I was completely silent after that and made up some excuse and left. I was It wasn't subtle at all, but I didn't care at the time and felt like crying. He's been blowing up my phone with messages and calls and all messages says is that I overreacted and embarrassed him in public. I haven't replied or picked up any of his calls. You embarrassed him in public? Oh my gosh. I am in no way saying that he must learn my native language, but the way he explained it hurt me. Now I'm wondering if I really did overreact and I am looking too deep into it. So am I the a-hole for doing that? I'm going to say not the a-hole. What? He literally like ridiculed her language in front of others. He could have just said, no, I haven't been trying to learn it. And that's that. You know, he didn't have to go on to say how it looks so difficult and it's not like other languages and this and that. I probably would have left too, honestly. And he's a crybaby for saying, oh, you embarrassed me in front of my friends. Yeah, you should be embarrassed in front of your friends. You should have been embarrassed by what you said. I'm really rough on people, aren't I? <laughs> but also... I have to, you know, be devil's advocate. Were they like drinking and things like that at this bar? Because maybe emotions were running high because of that. But I don't know. I think um, not the a-hole for the poster. The boyfriend seems to be more of the a-hole. But also things can be misconstrued if you're like drinking and, you know, just joking around, having a good time. Because we, I've said things that, you know, I didn't mean trying to joke when I was intoxicated too. So that could be, that could be it too. But I, I don't think sh this poster is the a-hole. There's no overall vote. I think this was posted nine hours ago, 10 hours ago. There's no overall vote, but the top, let's find the top comment. Oh, the top comment says, not the a-hole. He called your language rough and weird. How is that a joke? Edit, because I kept getting the response, well, a lot of languages can be considered weird and rough. Yes, not disagreeing with you there, but you don't say that to your significant other. You don't say that at your significant other's expense as a joke. Calling out her language like that was rude. Yeah, I do think it was rude because he could have just said, no, I haven't been trying to learn her language or, you know, whatever. Or I find it really difficult. He could have even said that. But no. So not the a-hole from the top comment. Why am I having so much trouble with these drills? Of course, I'm going to have to straighten them out, but I keep changing it to pen tips. Oh, it looks like there's like lots of back and forth in the comment section. The next comment says... There's definitely languages that are considered rougher than others and languages that are weirder than others. English is one of the weirdest languages, for example. Muting this because there's a whole lot of weirdos who really want to be mad about something and I've now gotten bored of replying. There's tons of people um, going back and forth in the comments. <laughs> Calling him racist and things like that. I don't know. I, I don't know. Not the a-hole for the poster, though. Am I the a-hole for refusing to stop calling my daughter a nickname? I, 33 male, have a daughter, 15. Um, I, I, like many parents, have different nicknames for my daughter, one being Princess. I have called my daughter Princess since she was a baby and still call her that even as a teenager. My sister, 35 female, has a three-month-old daughter. She was over at my apartment yesterday and said she needed to ask me something. She said she would like for me to stop calling my daughter Princess because she and her husband want to call her daughter princess people are <laughs> what 
I asked why they can't both have that nickname and she said it would be awkward if we were somewhere together and both girls got referred to as princess. I said, I'm not going to stop calling my daughter a nickname. I've always called her unless my daughter herself wants me to stop. Good for you, dad. What is wrong with your sister? My sister said my daughter is too old for the nickname princess anyway, and I have several other nicknames for her, so I it shouldn't matter. I'm just choosing to gatekeep and be an a-hole, which I'm not stopping my sister from using it. I'm just refusing to stop calling my daughter that nickname. My mom took my sister's side, agreeing that my daughter is too old for the nickname. What is wrong with people? I am not going to change my daughter's nickname because someone else wants to use the nickname what is going on this girl is 15 and has been called princess her whole life by her dad if like he said if the daughter said dad can you stop calling me princess I, i'm too old for it then fine I, stop like he said but in, in no way i would change i would call her princess more because i when they were around because i knew it bothered them that's the pettiness coming out but what this that just doesn't even make any sense so I say not the a-hole. There's no overall vote. This was posted six hours ago. Um, the top voted comment is not the a-hole. And this is a very silly request. Exactly. It's very silly. Princess is a super common nickname. So good luck to your sister if she thinks her daughter is going to be the only one who has it. It's also a bit weird to actively put out a nickname for your small child. My kids each have a variety of nicknames, none of which were the product of careful thought or discussion. They just arose organically as we interacted with them. That's very true. What if your daughter isn't uh, like the princess type? Whatever. But anyway, that's that's so silly. And it shouldn't even like be a back and forth with the family. I wouldn't even think to say, oh, let me ask my brother if he'll stop using this nickname. For his daughter or for my niece or whatever people like to create problems where there's no problem is a sister obsessed with princesses or something like that i wonder all right let's find another one i've run out of um Stories that I saved. I didn't save that one. I just clicked on it. Am I the a-hole for refusing to move my car to help a woman enter her car when she parked outside the lines? Now, I clicked on this one when I read the title because sometimes I park outside the lines. Not like extremely. No, I'm not going to say that. Sometimes I park really close to the line. My car is inside the line, but it's really close to the line. And I've noticed that I do that sometimes when I'm at work and I just pull in. And as I'm walking away from my car, I'm like, man, I'm really close to that line. So that's why I clicked on this one to see what it's all about. <laughs> this just happened an hour ago. I, 30 male, went for some quick grocery shopping at a small grocery store. The parking lot is very small and only about 20 parking spaces that are usually all taken. As I was searching for a parking spot, I saw that one was available and quickly realized why. Someone parked their car outside the lines, occupying a small portion of the vacant parking spot. I have a small car and realize I can still park there, provided I get very close to the parked car, blocking their driver's side door, allowing me to comfortably exit through my driver's side door. I want to emphasize that I park completely within the lines. As I exited my car and headed towards the grocery store, a woman, roughly 40 female, called out to me and asked me to move my car so she can enter hers. I told her that I parked within the lines and that she can enter her car through the passenger side door. <laughs> she again asked me to move my car and I said no. Turned around and entered the grocery store. I then glanced outside to see her struggling to get inside her car and driving off. I wanted to make sure she doesn't key my car or anything. I just wanted to mention that this woman seemed like she realized she screwed herself and wasn't mean or pushy throughout the whole ordeal. As I got home, I enthusiastically told my wife about my pettiness, but she said I was an asshole for doing that and that I unnecessarily ruined this woman's day. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for refusing to move my car? <laughs> my pettiness wants to say not the a-hole, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say a-hole. He could have just moved his car. Um... 
and if it was me in this situation i would have moved my car because i wouldn't want to have to like think about the fact that oh what if she keys my car and things like that the minutes that he stood there to watch her struggle get getting into her car he could have just moved his car and moved on like i said the pettiness wants me to say not the a-hole but he is probably the a-hole for doing that to that woman i don't know if it's because i'm thinking like male versus woman and things like that i don't know i may be a little biased there but i don't I'm going to have to say a-hole for this one. There's no overall um, vote for this one. Let's see what the top voted comment is. That is a funny story, though. <laughs> He's like, nope, I parked within the lines. You shouldn't have double parked. I know, I and I know everybody else is going to say he's not the a-hole um, because he parked within the lines because people hate people that don't know how to park. Probably also biased there because I always seem to park wonky. So top, oh, top up vote is not the A-her. Her piss poor parking created the problem. Maybe she will try harder next time. <laughs> I knew it. I knew the top voted comment was going to say not the A-hole. Um, but he sat there and watched the lady struggle. He could have watched her struggle a bit and then went and moved his car. I don't know. And then um, someone else, someone else, I think, um, so the next comment, because this one has a lot of upvotes too, while this may be true, for all we know, there was another car on her other side, which had parked badly, and she had to park poorly to compensate. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of that. When people park badly, I always wonder if maybe someone who has since left was actually the party responsible for the chain of bad parking jobs. I'd say you're the a-hole because you have no idea why they parked badly in the first place, including just a simple mistake. If you had the time to stand there the entire time she was trying to get out, then it wouldn't have hurt to just help her out. If I was the party who parked badly enough that I had to ask the one to move so I could leave, that would have been lesson learned, lesson enough. Yeah, that's why I said like, I didn't think about someone else could have parked badly next to her and they had since leaped gone they have since gone and she is left to park that way just like you had to jimmy your car in you know because she parked that way i didn't really consider that before but that's why i said he's he's probably the a-hole for watching this lady struggle to get into her car so that was the second most upvoted comment on that one i think i'm gonna read one more this video is probably going to be a shorter video guys I, Listen, I know I always say that and then I just keep talking, but no, this is probably going to be the last one. Okay, this one says, am I the a-hole for leaving my son's wedding early? I don't like this three-placer. All right, back to the pin I started with and I am going to just use... Oh, on my desk, I have this Excuse Me Designs putty that I got in that mystery bag. So I'm just going to try to, I'm going to try that. I've been through so many pins today. So I'm just going to get some of that up and put it into my placer here. Oh, it smells like... I don't know what it smells like. It smells like a floral scent. I don't know if there's a scent. Oh, I got my top stuck. Oh, it says beach bum. Oh, some of that. Oh, it's still sticky. I'm like, some of that rubbed off. So we're going to use this putty and see how that works. And a new tip so I don't have to keep changing my tips because... There we go. Am I the a-hole for leaving my son's wedding early? Let me get the put imprint into, oh yes. Why didn't I just change this putty sooner? This is my first time using this putty. Um, as I'm sitting at my desk, I don't know where my other putty is that I was using. But anyway, my son, Alan, 26 male, has just recently gotten married to Helen, 
25 to 26 female. I love them both very much. It's relevant to mention that I really dislike parties and large gatherings. I'm not sociable at all and I really just dislike them. So it was kind of a, so it was kind of a downer when I heard that Alan and Helen were going to have a wedding with around 150 people. Oh, I like this. Huh. Ooh. All righty. I told Alan ahead of time that I would probably leave early and that me and the rest of our family would take two cars so that they could stay if they wanted to. He looked like he didn't mind at the time. So at the wedding itself, after the ceremony, I basically told him that I was glad and it looked great, but I was going to go home. He asked me if I was going to at least stay for cake or for food, but the food didn't look all that appetizing to me. So I told him I was just going to leave. He said, all right, whatever, just go. And I went back to my table to get my stuff. I told my wife and she said she didn't feel comfortable driving back alone. The venue was very far from us and the roads there were not great. I said, in that case, she should come with me. And after some hemming and hawing, she agreed. So we left. Already a hole. Already. And I, I'm not, I didn't even read the rest of um this post here it's your son's wedding for goodness sake um then two days later alan's new wife bombarded me and my wife with messages that she was disgusted with us saying horrible things about us and insulting us as people and as parents well his new wife is out of line for that really just sickening i told her off and asked why she thought it was okay to talk to her in-laws like that and she said she that us leaving ruined the wedding for Alan and that he was really upset for the rest of the night. She continued to berate us. I politely told her to leave us alone and called Alan mainly to inform him that his wife had a temper that he should know about. When we asked about it, he basically started berating me too and said things like, you always do this and just leave me alone before hanging up. I feel like I'm justified since I told him ahead of time and that I wasn't going to stay. Am I the a-hole here? Yes, you're the a-hole. And then he has an edit. Since so many people care about the details, yes, there was a mother-son dance plan. Yes, he included me in the count for the food cost. Yes, I love him. No, this does not mean that I do not care about him. A-hole. The parents are the a-hole. They left right after the ceremony and didn't even... Like the dad said that there was a mother-daughter dance plan and they left before that. They left right after the ceremony before they didn't even, they didn't have to stay at the reception for a long period of time, but at least do the dance that was planned and at least like have a little bit of food. The dad says the food didn't even look appetizing. So he was ready to go home. This is your son's wedding. Oh my gosh. I would if. I would have been really, really disappointed in my parents if that happened. And and we had this dance planned and you you left before we could even do that. And then I'm standing there and my parents has left my wedding. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. The, totally the a-hole. This was posted three hours ago, so no overall vote. Oh my gosh. I I Yes, a-hole, why would you do that to your son? Okay, so the most upvoted comment says, you're the a-hole, you didn't even stay for the meal that they paid for. What an absolutely disgusting lack of love and respect from you as a parent. You also strong-armed your wife into leaving too, so your son had no parents present at his reception. How you don't see that you're the a-hole is a mystery to me. Yes, exactly. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, that's crazy. And then the next comment says, yes, and now he's playing the victim card when the new daughter-in-law called him out. Why even bother going if you can't be there fully for your son on his wedding day? The fact that you left before the mother-son dance or the speeches speaks volume. 
as does your comment about the food not being appetizing. Your son is fed up with you pulling this stunt every time he needs you. Not sure why you can't see you're the a-hole. By the way, I might leave early does not mean right after the wedding ceremony I'm leaving. Your son deserves so much better. I agree. I do think the wife was out of line for calling and berating them. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I, I think that's out of line. Um, but, um, that's not what this is about. The poster is the a-hole. Like, yeah. Right after the ceremony. <laughs> Jeez, oh, peeps. All right, guys. So, that's the last one today. So, I'm probably going to take this diamond painting back upstairs and put my Peaches diamond painting out because I do want to finish that one this month. Um... I'm going to have a lot of straightening to do on this diamond painting because there's tons of color blocking in here. I just love the way it's coming out. I have completed very little of this painting, like some over here and a little on the other side. But yes, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you love diamond painting, crafting, and all things hobbies, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos with a friend. Until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.